Do we have Mark Sargent? You do. Awesome. Thank you for being here tonight. Yeah. What's going on? Oh, you know, not much. The Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse. That's that's yeah. the, that's the biggest thing I think right now. Yeah, it seems to be the biggest thing right now. And right now, that's what reminded me of Survival Guide, which is something you put out years ago. Yeah. I actually emailed you about that. Like, first off, let's start off here, because I know some people won't get the Four Horsemen thing. Mm -hmm. What brought you into Flat Earth Clues? What brought you into this world of just thinking outside the box and putting that together? Sure. Uh, what got me into Flat Earth was just conspiracies in general. I had looked at just about every conspiracy you could think of back in 2014 and was bored. Literally, it was just bored of all the conspiracies, and the one conspiracy that nobody looks at because it's so stupid is flat, <laughs> is flat Earth. Seriously, yeah. and I looking at this, going, oh, I don't want to look at it. I don't want to look at it. And it's like you know what? I'm getting older. Let's just check this thing off my bucket list. I can knock this thing out in a weekend. Get an opinion on it. I'll be versed on it. And that was the biggest mistake ever. I I slowly but surely drove myself insane over the next nine months trying to prove the globe. In a, yeah. court, in a court of law and to where I just gave up, gave up fighting for the globe, basically, yeah. like, like everybody, like a lot of people, you know, and so I put a, a series of videos together uh, slowly but surely in the beginning of February 2015, called them Flat Earth Clues and put myself out on the Internet. And that's, you know, why I put my real phone number and my name and, and my address and everything and, and said, OK, academia, tell me where I screwed this up because I need to get some sleep. Yeah. And honestly thought that someone could shoot me down and I could just go back. You know, it's like, okay, here's where you made the mistake. The obvious mistake that's going to, you know, you can go back to your normal life. And it never happened. People just, people, the general public started calling me. Media started calling me. Subject matter experts started calling me. Uh, and the subject matter experts were, were the worst because they were the ones, you know, from all branches of the military and pilots. Yeah. And they were saying, you know what? It's not that crazy. And here's why. Yeah. And nobody refuted their own testimony. Nobody went against these guys. And I compiled this list of 20 something subject matter experts. And that just, that carried me through 2015. And, you know, here we are five years later, five, yeah. five years last month. And it's just gotten, you know, conferences, hundreds of regional meetups, two yeah. books, a commercial, yeah. uh, all sorts of fun stuff. You know, I, yeah. I, I, I've lost count of the interviews. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it's been been a lot of fun. I hadn't checked in in a long time, but like five years ago, I saw Flat Earth Clues and I, I watched it yeah. and I thought it was really well put together because we all know NASA, what, gets what, $63 million a day now, I think that they get? Yeah, something along those lines. Yeah. And so they have a huge budget to put together propaganda, but you, you're a computer programmer. Am I wrong about that? I, I initially started out in the gaming world, but I haven't programmed in years. But uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm pretty well versed. Yeah, but storyboarding it, putting it together cohesively, I think you put together a really well piece of counter propaganda that actually made people think about where they live. Because I don't think a lot of people think about, you know, do you live on a flat earth, a spinning ball? Why are we here? Any right. of those questions. I right. think we're trained to live in a world to not ask those questions. Right. Okay. And I watched you get pilfered. And then I came back later now when I asked you to do this. And you have so many subscribers now. And it's like blown up so massively. But I remember when it was like a fringe outside crazy theory. And oh, it yeah. seems like it's getting bigger now. Oh, yeah, yeah. It just kept building. I mean, we had these weird jumps in media where, uh, like, in 2015, it was pretty slow, but just because, you know, we weren't even in it a year. And then 2016, you had rapper B.O.B. going up against Neil deGrasse Tyson. And then in 2017, you had um, Kyrie Irving and some of the other NBA players start talking about it. And then in 2018, you had Mad Mike and the whole rocket thing, you know, be yeah. before the accident. And it just kept getting just – and then the documentary, the um, Behind the Curve, which was yes. you know, released by Netflix. That was 2018 going into 2019. And, yeah, it just, it just never stopped. It just kept – mostly because our retention rate's so high. You know, yeah, it is. It, it, once you're in, because I, I, they, I tell people, I go, we got like a 99% retention rate because it's like, how is that possible? I go, because we didn't convince you. You convinced yourself. 
That's the right. key to flat earth. I didn't tell you to tear down the globe. You tore it down trying to disprove the flat earth. And once you've torn it down, it turns into the red pill, blue pill thing where yeah. all of a sudden, you're, you know, you know, the line from the Matrix where it's like, even if you wanted to go back to the Matrix, how could you? You know, right. you were the one that volunteered to leave. And once you know, <laughs> you can't unknow. And so that's, again, how we, we got to this point. Yeah, I mean, I just love good propaganda, and you can tell that they're putting it out. Like, I have a NASA shirt on as a joke because people know that I know they're putting out propaganda. They've lied so many times that if they are telling the truth, right. I need a lot more proof at this point in time because I've seen how many lies they've told. Now, I right. need to ask these questions, if you don't mind, if I can no. fire away in rapid success. Yeah, 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 go ahead. Um is it a qualification of yours to be your friend that someone has to believe in flat earth? No, no, not at all. Um, as a matter of fact, because everybody, the people ask why I don't get mad when I get interviewed by somebody that's really, really hostile. And, or if I meet new people on the street and I say, no, because I used to be them. I was on the other side of the fence. Nobody starts out loving flat earth. Nobody, everybody yeah. hates it. And so when somebody gets really mad and, you know, and, and I've got friends, family it's like you know there some some are on the fence some aren't some are in the closet some hate it and it's like that's fine that's fine i hated it for nine months how can i yell at you i literally hated it i give people at least several months to try to get their their head around it and you know you can kind of tell if they're if they're tolerant of it or if some things make sense and yeah. so no i have no problem now, I have to ask this because other people will say this on the other the the other French side and they'll go, that uh, Mark Sargent, he's a shill. He's lying. Right. He's a CIA. Have you ever been in the CIA, Mark? <laughs> no. All right. No, no, I, I ne think. never have. Uh, I started out, li I mean, literally I went from uh, college to um, playing video games for a living out in Colorado. I did that for several years and then taught proprietary software out there and did that for i was out in colorado for 20 years doing my own thing got into conspiracies and then did this so new the only thing that ever people it's weird it's subliminal stuff where so i live in a town up near seattle washington called langley yeah and there's a, like langley canada but the most famous langley is langley virginia which is of course cia headquarters right well right, right. literally on, on my envelope it's it's langley wa and yeah. langley virginia is langley va so people see it and that's all it takes it's like oh yeah well he's obviously sinister it's like no it's the other side of the country it's no no and, and anyone anyone that meets me seriously you can ask any any one of the high, uh, the high profile people that have met me at conferences uh, I, have. They, they, I actually have met dave weiss in person he lives like 10 minutes from my house and i, I mean, asked him i was like i watched strange world for years and stuff like mark Sargent. he's a solid guy he's like great guy love him he's an awesome guy yeah yeah, I talked to David this morning. We were, we're talking about, you know, the panic and how America is going to burn down soon. And and he tells everybody, he's like, oh, yeah, uh, Mark's just a huge dork. You know, and yeah. I am. I, I am. A, I'm a big dork. I'm, I, I could out nerd just about anybody when yeah. it comes to that. Uh, I mean, Grant, I did an interview the other day where the kid was wearing it. He said he had actually had Star Wars tattoos. And I say, look, I owned a comic book shop and I played video games for a living. Yeah. So don't ever think you can out geek me. It's not going to yeah. happen. No, but like, okay, so you don't you don't have those qualifiers. Are you trying to harm children by forcing you, what you believe on children and jamming it in schools? I know it's the other way around right now with the globe and evolution and all that stuff. But are you trying to force it in on anybody? No, 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 not at all. As a matter of fact, um, CBS was trying to work that angle for a little bit, and other people yeah. have. In fact, I put it in the book. I say, look, you don't have to worry about flat earth going after children. Right. We, we already have them. And the reason we already have them is because we skew younger. The younger you are, the more receptive you are to the idea. Uh, the, you got Doug Guff survey. The 18 to 24 year olds, we were skewing a full third. Under 18, yeah. we're over half. I saw, I saw that. That's so why it's interesting. We, what are you going to do? In fact, you know, I've had, I mean, I did um, two high schools just last week. I did a university this morning. Um, there was a, my, one of my favorite videos I put out was a, I didn't have anything to do with it was a middle school that started their own flat earth club during lunch. Yeah. And, and it's like with no teacher supervision, it's great. Fantastic. Go for it. So if the documentary people get mad because a 12 year old asked me a question on stage, I didn't ask him to be there. It's yeah. not like, it's not like we've got a, a Joe camel smoking campaign aimed directly at kids. Yeah. So. 
But they do, though. They, I mean, they yeah, spend yeah. big money to get their... Uh, okay, this is my thing, right? I, a lot, I take a lot of heat on these streams, and, and people will nail the comment section. Somehow it only goes out to trolls. But my interest as somebody who was into psychological science and propaganda for a long time yep. is, one, I know there's propaganda coming from the other side. And, yes, they're teaching it to kids. But number two, I worked in a frontline job with thousands of people for years, and I was amazed at how many people couldn't answer the most basic question of why they believed the Earth was a globe. It It is one of the things, you know, there's, a, there's an old saying in politics, which is, only teach the population just enough to keep things running. Yeah. Uh, we, we teach the, the general population very, very little about physics and engineering and chemistry. Yeah. And that is why you, they get to get away with what they get away with. Um, the wonderful quote, which I love from George Orwell, and he said this in 1946. He said, if you go down on the street, and he wasn't a flat earther. He said, and you, he was talking about the, how science has a responsibility because people just believe whatever science tells them. He said, yes. he, you out on the street and ask them how they know the world is a globe. First response is always the same. Well, we know. That duh, it's obvious. We know. And then you say, really? How do you know? Then they start getting irritated because then all of a sudden they realize that they don't know. How in, how in the world, if NASA wasn't even founded until 1958, how would everybody in the world know in 1946 there was a globe? We didn't right. even have a space program until right. 1958. You I didn't, you don't know. You were told and you, you, and, and again, don't feel bad. You were told and your parents and your parents going back generation after generation, all the way back to the 1500s. So you didn't have a chance. It's like, look, they just had to put a globe in your classroom and leave it there. You couldn't go to your grandparents. They, they'd say the same thing. It's like, oh yeah, it's a globe. Really? How do you know it's a globe? Yeah. Right, Cause it, it's right there. It's a globe. It's that big yeah. blue toy whatever. Yeah. But you know, like people give me the argument. It's like putting this out hurts children. And I, my argument back to them is no, they will go crazy trying to disprove it. It will get them into more, different types of sciences and physics and astronomy and things it'll get them interested in figuring out how the world works you know whether that be engineering no matter what science field that's in so i actually think it's a valid challenge and i think that it should be tested in fact most of the people pushing the globe model to push uh, evolution and stuff on our kids yeah. also push things like uh, pedophilia they also push things like uh well, what, what did Dawkins just put out? Like eating human flesh a long time ago, he sure. put out, he tried to introduce that. I mean, these sick ideas come from these depraved people, and yet we're not allowed to challenge them, and right. I just don't understand that. Pow power corrupts, and science has become, science has turned into scientism, and scientism is basically its own religion. And that yeah. is, they realized some years ago, if you were wearing the white coat, you can say basically anything you want as long as it's yeah. within some boundaries and say, you know what, that's what it is. And, you know, which is why Neil deGrasse Tyson's statement, which I love so much, he said that science is true whether or not you believe in it. And I come back and say, like, whoa, whoa, whoa. It's like, okay. So, which is like, okay, do you want to tell me what the boiling temperature of water is at sea level? Yeah, I can test that. Tell me what the core of the earth is again. Tell me exactly how you know what the core of the earth looks like. And then they'll backpedal. They'll say, well, yeah. we don't really know. And I go, then why do you keep showing people that stupid diagram? Because once you so, show somebody a diagram when they're 10 and then they see it again when they're 18, it's like, well, that hasn't changed in 10 years. It must be how it is. It's like, no, no, it's not. Science is only, my statement is this, science is only true until the day that it's not. So right. science can make the, all the claims they want, but you can disprove it if you got stuff that's good enough. Right. And that's, yeah. what we're, that's what we're running into right now with the long distance photography. You know, the hey, science, what? science was right 15 years ago. Boats did go over the horizon 15 years ago because our, our te camera technology was crappy by comparison. Now, anybody with 500 bucks can go out and, and shoot boats that are way beyond the curve. Yeah. Well, beyond the curve of the calculations that they give to us, that exactly. they say that the earth exactly. is. Like, this is their model. Like, so, you know, I know you have your own beliefs on what you believe that it is. Mm -hmm. My My interest is always poking holes in the fact that they have no idea what they're talking about and they're making it up as they go. It almost like they're stacking theory on theory on theory. And when you just attack it repeatedly, it just doesn't seem to hold up. So I, I, I'm of the essence of, I don't need to know what it is. I just, I'm fine with that. It's just, 
I know these people are lying about something, and I just don't know what it is. So it's very interesting how sure of themselves they are with how little proof they have. Right. Right, right. So that's why I love the movement. Now, the other question is, to you know, in uh, the anything that you put forward, you, you used to do a, a stream. I don't know if you still do it. I haven't seen it lately, but I used to watch it all the time before I go to bed, not because it put me to bed, not because it was boring, because it was entertaining. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Strange World. You used to do that all the time. I did it. I just finished my 242nd show last night. As a matter of fact, oh. I've been doing it. I've been doing it pretty much for well. I celebrated my five year anniversary recently, and yeah, 242. So hoping to hoping to get to 244 because the United States is 244 years old. So I'm hoping yeah. I can have as many episodes as there's been years in the United States. Yeah, well, let's pray that we can get there, and that will be the topic of tonight, thankfully. Um, but another last question. Yeah. Uh, would you like uh, to take everybody's guns, weaponry, and enslave them globally to a one-world government? Is that your plan, Mark? <laughs> you know what I think gun control is? Using two hands. That's what I think gun control is. Don't ever yeah. come at me and say that I'm going to take. No, I'm I'm a big gun fan. I you know I grew up. I know. I grew I up know. doing fireworks for a living, guns and explosives. Yeah. In fact, I used to sign. I'm really amazed. None of my old classmates. I used to sign my high school annuals. You know, when, when it's like when we were leaving for the summer. Guns and bombs forever, Mark. <laughs> That's literally what I would do. So no, I'm a huge huge fan of action movies. Um, big fan of firearms. Uh, I'm getting a little older, so I'm glad I didn't buy a Barrett when I had a chance some years ago. Yeah. Because I think that would have been a little heavy, a little tough on the shoulders. Yeah. But, but you know, okay, so for, for a year, I, I was trying to just go after really hard topics, and it was, you know, communism, or it was abortion, or it was, you know, a ton of different things totalitarianism, one world government, who's exposing people, who's behind it. Right. And then the the worst heat I get, though, the, the streams that go out that get the most trolls are flat earth. And it seems to me the most harmless of the ideas. Like, what's more dangerous, a totalitarian government that's telling us all we need to stay home because of a disease we can't see right now? Right. Or you saying, hey, I kind of think the earth is flat. Do you agree with what I'm putting out or not? You don't have to watch me. Um, which one's more dangerous? Oh, ab <laughs> well, I think you're seeing what's more dangerous yeah. if you're trying to segue into that. And I am a huge believer. You know, I did a big rant last night for at least an hour on this in that the, the virus for me, do I think the virus is real? Yes, I do. Do I think it's just a weak strain of flu that's not killing anybody? Yeah, I do. Do I think the media is hyping this thing up to insane oh levels? I mean... We just shut down and I, and I was trying people. It's happened so fast that I'm, I'm having a hard time getting it's people. It hasn't sunk in. It's like, look, we just shot shut down a trillion dollar economy because yeah. 100 elderly people died. Yeah. Not knocking elderly people. I'm just saying, look, America has killed far more for far less. Shutting yeah. down the, the most major corporations in the world for, yeah. for this. <laughs> There's yeah. there this is this is a smoke screen for something that's way bigger that's coming down the pipe. But yeah. because because the media every minute of every day right now is is beating the drum and they're saying it could get worse. It could get worse. Look how much yeah. worse it could get. That's all they're saying. And yeah. and people there people don't understand it's like you can only kick that can down the road so many times. We're even like Wall Street analysts today were coming back because it dropped below 20,000. And yeah. they were saying they're saying look why is everyone freaking out so much? I go, you know, in the in the time that this segment ran, you know, we've lost five thousand people, you know, to to different things all, all over the United yeah, States. Yeah, yeah. You've got, you've got a twice as likely. I did an odds thing last night of the the least likely things to die from the United States. You got to remember, <laughs> even if we hit a death hole in the United States of three hundred and fifty, that's one in a million, right? Yeah. You've yeah, got a yeah. you've got a twice as likely chance to die from accidentally shooting yourself. Yeah, twice than you are to catching this thing. Yeah. So no, it, there's no, and I, I'm not being insensitive. So when I say, look, I'm not even going to, I'm not even going to pay attention to the numbers until I see four digits in most of the States. And that's yeah. not going to happen because yeah. how could it, it the, and, and the reason, I'm sorry, I hate to get off on a rant here, but the reason, no, go. the reason why it pisses me off so much 
is because the transmission rate is ridiculously slow. If Because I'm going to what they said. This is like they're saying it's airborne and it's contact surface, right? You can touch things yeah. and get it. Yeah. You can breathe somebody next to it. But it showed up at Christmas and we're in the middle of March and there's only 100 people dead. It's like, yeah. sorry, once it hits the first international airport, it gets to the every other airport. It gets to the regional airports. People get in their rental cars. They go home. They touch things. It goes to school. Everyone would be infected by now. And it hasn't freaking happened. And yeah. the transmission rate is way too slow. It's it's. Do I think it's real? Sure. Why not? If you want to label a weak version of the flu, that's fine. Now, could it possibly overload some hospitals? Maybe. But is, does that give you justification to shut down every restaurant, every casino, every gym, every library, every yeah. museum, go every sport, every sports, everything from the the Masters golf tournament to NASCAR to basketball? I mean, NASCAR? That's outdoors. You couldn't do social distancing? <laughs> like, yeah. Oh. It's, it's a, you know, but okay, so here's what really annoys me, right? Yeah. And I worked in social sciences and psychological sciences. That's what I did. Health science, psychological science, marketing, propaganda, all those things. Right. And for years, I you know, I enjoyed crazy ideas and, and backtracking to see what was true, what wasn't true, and just doing research and just saying, hey, that's a crazy idea. I wonder what that is. In fact, one guy put up a video like, look, there's a plane in the sky. It's hiding. It's, it's disguised as a cloud. I'm like, that guy's an idiot. And then I saw a video of the actual plane that mimics clouds in the sky. And I'm like, oh my God, he's telling the truth. Um, but you're watching people fall for this and quarantine themselves, like give up their own rights. So the truth, quote yeah. unquote, truth community that eats itself, that says no one else is allowed to be a part of it. I am the sole truth teller. You must obey me, donate to me, come right. to me. They all attack everyone else instead of now when times we actually are getting into martial law in a totalitarian society right now. Right. Oh. As we speak. Yep. And no one's saying boo. Like very few people. I won't say no one, but very few people are saying anything about it. You're, you're right. Because because the media, we believe there's a line from the Truman Show, which I love so much. And that is we believe the world that is presented to us. And we're yeah. not just talking about the literal world. We're talking about how the media portrays the world. So if the media says over and over, be afraid, you need to go yeah. home. You All you have to do is create an artificial fear. And this is not anything. This is not something new. This is something that's been going on for years and years. I love, there's a there's a wonderful um, scene in Close Encounters of the Third Kind going all the way back to the 70s, which was how did they clear, if you remember that movie, how did they clear out that massive area around Devil's Tower? They came out, it's like, oh, we'll just tell everyone a train crashed and there was poison gas on it. All they had to do was tell the townspeople there was poison gas, put a few dead sheep around, and everybody freaking ran for the hills. They could not get out of Wyoming fast enough. And yeah. that's that's how the story progressed. This is not a new trick. All you have to do is say, there's a virus out there. It potentially could kill you. And it works more on old people. I think it was a big mistake to tell everyone that, that kids are basically bulletproof to this thing. Yeah. There, there's not even a single, if you believe the victims, they're not even reporting that somebody under 40 has died, as far as I know. Yeah. So, and yet they still cleared all the schools out. All the universities yeah. are closing down. Everything that is happening right now because I love going looking at the lowest common denominator. This is the big thing that I was harping on last night. It the 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 virus is just everything that it is doing, all the steps that are being taken are forcing you to do one thing and one thing only, and that is go home. The whole yeah. family for the first time ever is home as a unit all over the place. You know where your family yeah. is, and they made sure of this because they have limited what you can do outside of your home. So even if you wanted to go out, even if you had like a fistful of cash, where are you going? You're going yeah. nowhere. You, nowhere. You, you can go to the grocery store. You can go to the pharmacy. You can go to the hardware store. You might be able to buy some shoes some, somewhere here. Everywhere else is gone. You, it, they're basically telling you to go home. And I, I believe there is some, there's a secondary thing there. And I was, in fact, I was asking the viewers last night. It's like, there's an event coming. And that yeah, is they, where they, they want, I agree. I agree. They want you that. home for this event. And yeah. I've been rattling my brain trying to figure out what's big enough people said oh it's a 5g thing oh they're coming for your guns oh they're going to change the administration i'm going no that's all too small no that that is i think that's the the the, um, the siren song right now that that's what makes it okay we have a hero in the white house right now who's going to save us so if he's saying stay home then you should stay home and half the people go oh yeah that's a good idea now martial law 
that everybody was terrified of five, six years ago. Uh, was suddenly the greatest idea of all time. In fact, it's saving us all. Well, and yeah, go, in fact, you don't, a lot of people don't understand that martial law only works in a very, very limited capacity. The National Guard is really small. I mean, you I can know. look up the numbers of the National Guard. You may, a National Guard would have a whole hard time cordoning off a state. National Guard is, yeah. is limited. There, Katrina, National Guard's fine. If you try to, like, cordon off New York State, good luck. You could use the whole nation's National Guard. You would have a tough, tough time doing it. The yeah. whole country? You can't no, imply. Like you, the, no. You'd be lucky if you could get limited na martial law, even with, with tactical units, maybe in, in 10 or 15 of the major cities. That's it. That's all you have the resources for. But we don't have to do that because people are quarantining themselves. Yeah. They're like they're yeah. literally just locked. I know I know senior citizens, a whole bunch of them that will not leave their homes because the news has said, Don't go out. You are at well, risk. We and, we covered like the Twilight Zone episode where they see the flash in the sky and then uh, they don't know what it is and all the power goes out. And all the townspeople freak out because of the unknown. So they all start robbing and killing and looting each other, yep. all because of the unknown, unseen, it, because we're always afraid of the thing that we can't see. That is That's one of human the, nature. That is one of what they call one of the, the, the objective three best Twilight Zone episodes ever. And that one is called um, The Monsters Are Due on Maple Street. Yeah. That, and that. it is brilliant. It is brilliantly written. And again, it was shot in the 50s where the aliens were basically just looking from a distance. The aliens were just looking at them going, yeah, all we have to do is turn some lights on and off and they just tear each other apart. <laughs> and we can yeah. go to any town we want and do this. People and are so suspicious. Well, yeah, look, look real quick. No at, look, look at the stuff right now, right now, as we speak, you can't find toilet paper in any store in any city in the entire country. You can't yeah. find it. Every time they, they go in, you know, they get a fresh stock. And not a lot. You know, it's being rationed by the distributors. They get a fresh stock in the morning. Somebody comes in there. And it's like every time, it's like, look, you know your neighbors need it. Right? You only, there's only 20 packages on the thing. And they fill up their freaking basket. It's like, I need yeah. 10. I need 10 of these things right now. There's people getting killed over it. There's people that go out on stretchers. They have to get cops out. Like, this shows human nature of how panicky people can get right. when you repeat over and over fear, 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 which is why I wanted to have a talk, a fun talk with you. And people go, oh, why do you do the Flat Earth episodes? It's like, well, you want to pump fear at people all day? Or do you want to <laughs> think about, you know, like more of an enjoyable stream and an enjoyable life? Like we can sit here and talk about it, obviously, like. Turning on the news right now, I think we watched the news yesterday. My son was with me, and they interviewed a woman who said, well, if it's the end of the world, I want to be drunk. I go, how do you air that? That's sickening. Like, my kid now thinks it's the end of the world. Like, thanks for scaring him to death. <laughs> Last, you know, two months ago, they sent all the kids home in New York where I live, you know, well, I live in Connecticut, but near New in New York, because they said the world was going to end in five years. So they told all the kids, since the world's going to end in five years, take the day off. How, like, how much more can you terrorize the kids, but the, yet they blame me doing a stream with you on, like, uh, you know, sure. you know, I, I don't know what's going on. But, you know, it's like we're all just trying to figure this out. Oh, yeah. I'm more scared of the vaccine than I am as, a, as a, someone who did practice science than I am of this invisible thing that I have yet to see in a lab. But I did do a stream last night where I showed every symptom of coronavirus. I live in the area of connecticut that has the most hospitals it dictates all the i guess medical policy amongst the world you know the yale new havens and things like that i went around and said i've got every symptom of coronavirus can i get a test i went to at least six places they said we don't make tests i go what, what do you mean you don't make tests so I, where are you getting the numbers from and they go oh you have probably just one of the many viruses floating around and i was like Oh my God, I just did a stream saying, I think this is a bioweapon. And now I just go get it myself and I go get tested and all these other sick people, they don't even have the test. Yeah. And then I, it changed my whole perspective on that. It's, so I'm, yeah. it's a stall. That's all it is. The, the virus. And again, people can get mad at me if they want, but I'm saying the virus is just a fear beat. That's all it is. The virus is just hype. 
it's misdirection. You were watching the right hand, and the right hand is really, really loud. <laughs> it's like virus, yeah. virus, virus, virus. Whatever the left hand is, it is going is very, very quiet. People, people have gone so far to say that it's a, it's a, another financial thing, like two thousand eight. It's like it's like a bank reset. And I'm going, you don't, no. need, you don't know. It's bigger than that. You two thousand. Yeah. Look, I was there in two thousand eight, and nobody shut down anything. As a matter of fact. People drank a lot more. <laughs> they went to the yeah. bar. The bars and restaurants were crowded with with people that were pissed off that they lost, you know, a bunch of money in the housing market. So no, 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 no. This is this is something very, very different. I mean, you know, again, the the United States is two hundred and forty four years old, and we're doing daily. The president, for the first time ever, is doing daily press briefings. I mean, yeah. freaking Roosevelt didn't do radio briefings. I don't think every day during World War Two. And yeah. it's just, yeah, it is, it is wild. It's absolutely it, wild. It, to steal a phrase from you, it's becoming in a very strange world. Uh, oh, to, yeah. It is. I've, I've, yeah. I'm stunned by, in fact, even my timetables, the ones that I've, I've said, well, this won't, this won't happen for a week or two. This won't happen for two or three weeks. It's like it happens in, in 24 hours. Yeah. I mean, even no, though, I'm amazed at that too. I yeah. said six weeks will be under martial law and they just said me, they said, no, you're home for two weeks today. That's why I had to stall a little bit yeah. today. I just, that just came in. I'm home now for two weeks. So I guess we'll figure that out. Subscribe if you want, but you know, <laughs> like I'm just, you know, subscribe to Mark too. By the way, I got to ask this question because while we're on the topic of subscribing, yeah. I went to go link uh, your flat earth clues in case people were curious and yeah. they don't have to agree with it. Yeah. I couldn't find it. What the hell's going on with that? Oh, when flat earth became a problem. Well, when they started, when they tried to slow us down after we had saturated YouTube basically for three years straight and they promoted us, uh, we became a, a part of the fake news thing. We yeah. became part of the, the top three problems, which were... Um, Let's see. It was snake oil, 9-11, or maybe false flags. And, well, false flags, no. I think it was 9-11 and flat earth. And we were brought up to Congress. You know, we were brought up to a, a little thing. And yeah. the, the head of Google and YouTube were saying, okay, we're going we're gonna to crack down on some of these, but we're going to recommend flat earth less. And so every video that I've made for months and months now, um, what happens is you can, like, you know, I'll, I'll put it up. No, I've got a decent sub count for what I do. Likewise, and you yeah. cannot you cannot find it right away. I mean, I'm one of those channels that is it's not shadow banning, I don't think necessarily, but it's definitely not being recommended as as much as other things, which is fine for me. It's like I don't care. You know, most of my stuff comes from from media and other interviews and uh, the documentary once that was in place, that was fine. Uh, but I feel bad for some of the other content makers. I mean, you know, guys that have 100,000, 150, 300,000 yeah. subs, they're not really getting recommended much either. No, and, and they're helpful and they have good ideas that they need to put out and people need to hear. Like my, this is the whole idea of my podcast. I worked in social and health science. I think I'm relatively intelligent. Yeah. I think there's people way more intelligent than me. They need to get their voice heard. And YouTube used to be a place where anyone could get their voice heard. And there's people that I want promoted that are better than me. Yeah. And I don't think they're going to be heard. And I'm lucky enough that I get connections here and there. And I have good chats with people. And people like it. And it's grown pretty quickly. But, you know, I'm recommended 0.03% of the time. I never checked those numbers because I didn't expect it would go this long. Yeah. But it's like... You know, there's got to be way smarter people and you're not hearing from them because they're getting six views and they're, you know, they're off YouTube in yeah. a week because they're getting frustrated. Where I knew there was a problem. I mean, don't don't feel too bad because there's a huge amount of content out there. I mean, people can look up the stuff. I know there's a lot of big channels that put out um, uh, anti-flat earth videos out there. I mean, you know, when you're looking through the top 50 but, and they're going to you, you can't have a major network like ABC, NBC, CBS and so on and so on, they're not going to make pro flat earth videos because they're worried about what might happen to them. Yeah. In fact, CBS ran a, a great piece using uh, Patricia Steer a couple of years ago uh, down. We did a meetup in Los Angeles and it was it was top of the charts in flat earth all the time. It was, you know, mil once it got a million hits, all of a sudden it just vanished. I mean, gone. Oh. It was pulled. And I knew exactly what happened, which was they got some some feedback from some of their listeners. CBS is an older audience. 
you know, fans of the Apollo mission. And so they, they went after it. But the thing that got me and oh, people, some God. people say it's delusional, but was when um, they took down the scoreboard entirely, which was I was tracking the numbers, which was you can go into you used to be able to go into YouTube like any search engine, including Google, who owns YouTube. And it says search results equals a number. So you type in anything, whatever it is, potato salad, tractor maintenance, you'll get a search results and a number. And yeah. when we started out, we had 50,000 search results. And by the middle of 2018, we were at um, almost 21 million, which was a, not videos necessarily, but re but references in YouTube itself. Yeah, it was, yeah, it yeah. Huge. But they would link to me. Yeah, and, and to give you guys a comparison, Lady Gaga was coming in at like 12 million, 13 million. Um, you know, NASA was coming in at 5 million. PewDiePie was coming in at 6 million, which is really weird considering how many subs he has. They're not all yeah. real. And the only people that were ahead of us were um, Katy Perry, Justin Bieber, and Donald Trump, for example. And Donald Trump, we just passed him that summer of 2018. And I made a video on it in, in Strange World. I said, I thought it was kind of clever. I said, Flat Earth yeah. passes the president of the United States. I thought it was so yeah. great. It was like, it was, it was wonderful. And then immediately after that, within like two weeks, somebody calls me up. They go, yeah, the scoreboard's gone. I go, what are you talking about? I go, I go, is our numbers stunted? You know, because they've been stunting our numbers a little bit. They go, no, it's not there anymore. I go, I go, search results equals zero. They go, no, search results aren't there anymore for all topics, period. So if you go into YouTube and you type in any topic, search results is not there anymore. That's like, what are you talking about? That's, that's internet 101. That's, that's search, search engine. That's the, the, what you put in search engines. And yeah. they said, yeah, whatever. And, and they, and I, I knew exactly why and people said, no, that that's delusional. That's not because of flat earth. I go, absolutely. It's flat earth because we were the only one that cared. We were the yeah. one that kept pointing to that number and saying, cause we were tracking just, yeah, I know. We I know. So, I watched so the whole thing. So it, the numbers were going up as NASA couldn't compete. And the thing that made me so mad is like, you guys gained so much momentum yeah. and they never responded. And it was like you would get a couple guys here and there. They would build them up. They'd boost the number counts up. They'd have an argument back. But NASA themselves or anyone representing them never really responded or took no. you guys on. Am I wrong about that? Have you debated? No, 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 I've no, no. NASA, regular people, I, but not high up people. No, no. I got a chance to talk to, I mean, I was so lucky. I got a chance to talk to one of our astronauts, retired astronauts, Terry Virts, on a British show. And yeah. I was coming in via Skype and he was there in the in the audience, but the host, Piers Morgan, was deflecting as much as he could. He was not and Terry never yeah. did answer any any one of my questions. And he couldn't. In fact, I was a little surprised that he was there in the first place. But other than him, no, Neil Tyson won't debate anybody. Uh Brian Cox, Michio Kaku won't debate yeah. hell, even Bill Nye. Who's not a scientist? Scientist. Yeah, he's he's, uh, he's not. He's, he's a, a freaking... professional actor, and he's a science promoter. They call him. And yeah. They say he makes solar sales. That's what. That's what he says he does. Yeah, but, but he gets he gets that. more TV time than everybody except for Neil Tyson because he looks like a scientist. He looks like a scientist. He wears a lab coat. He's thin. He's angular. He's got that stupid bow tie. Yeah. And he gets on panels, and I've talked to producers. I know exactly why he gets on. It's because your average scientist, once you, you know, once you get really, really high up in the education level, your, yeah. your social skills just plummet. I know. I yeah. know. Trust me. I've tried to get scientists on the show. They won't talk. And I'm like, buddy, I'm not trying to mess with you here. I like what you do. Can yeah. you just say what you do? And they, they have a hard time articulating They, they do. That. They do. And I feel bad. But, but you get, you do that with Neil, I'm sorry, with Bill Nye, and this becomes a slippery slope. Because then it's like, well, maybe we can get them on like a climate change panel. And you do. And let's get them to talk about quantum mechanics. Let's get them to talk about the Mars. Ro He's actually on a Mars rover panel, you know, that he helped said he helped design something. It's like, well, dude, you're an actor from Seattle. On climate change. And this is the funny thing. One, Bill Nye's advocated for locking people up that don't believe in climate change. He wants you in prison. He said that live. And number two, yeah. if you believe in the model that he promotes, right. th his model the earth wobbles and it moves back and forth like this. So there's times of cooling and warming. So yes, there's climate change. It's true. Sure. So you can't really deny it, but that's his model. And he says, if you don't believe it, you should be in jail. And I mean, so who's really the tyrant in this situation? Right, right, right. 
Yeah, and Bill Nye won't touch us with a 10-foot pole. Yeah, he's been asked about it, and I love that we're torturing him because all sorts of different hosts have asked him about it. We even, he even got a little spot in the documentary where, you know, he, he had one, his producers gave him a question. It's like, how do people believe still believe in Flat Earth? And he said, I don't know. So, eh. But anyway, the point is, is that there's very, very few media scientists that are willing to engage us at all. And yeah. so we don't. And so I, I've warned him. I mean, I, I give him our playbook. I go, look, we will win by attrition if you keep this up. And that's why National Geographic urged people to come out. That's why uh, CBS just recently said, look, science, you've got to do something. Because and, and I tell him, I go, look, flat Earth has become easier to explain than the solar system model. And people love easy things. And they say, it doesn't mean yeah. that it is right. And I go doesn't matter to me i go i think it's right and if i think it's right and it's easy to explain i'm going to get more people than you and it's just going to keep growing and growing and growing How yeah, well it gets people interested though yeah and, and then and people get angry and then they try to disprove it and then they go into physics they go into astronomy they go into uh you know uh building things and and, and mechanics and how stuff works like that's what happens it's not something that's going to talk a kid out of going into the sciences or stem no. or anything like that like it's a ludicrous argument. I, but fact, let me I, ask you I have Go learned ahead. so many scientific factoids. I've ha I have relearned so much science while getting into flat Earth that now, I mean, I can hold my own with just about anybody out there because it's, it's, I've had to relearn all the basics and memorize them. I have learned yeah. more about engineering. I have learned more about physics and astrophysics and chemistry and biology just because I had to use that against my opponents. Right. And so now it's like, and so like I, I did a thing in um, uh, Stockholm where I was, you know, talking to a guy and he had like nine pages of notes and all this stuff. I don't go in with notes. It's like, it's, and he's just fumbling through stuff. It's like, really? I, I go, you, you don't have a chance. So let's go to the easy propaganda, right? The easy, easy, easy propaganda. This is what drives me insane. And I have like, I don't know how you feel about it. I asked over probably 10,000 people over three years before it was cool when you were doing it. Yeah. Um, you know, why do you believe we live on a spinning ball? It's flat. Of course it is. And I used to do that like tongue in cheek. I didn't really believe it. It yeah. was just I wanted to see what they believed, And uh, they had no no response at all. But then when you ask people, how do you know we even went to the moon? They go, oh, because I saw it on TV. And that's the number one response. You, I saw it on TV. Yep. I saw it on TV. And if you tell them we didn't go, they get very angry because we went. And that is national pride. We went. Yep. It's off limits. How dare you say something like that? And I can't believe it because three people might have have went on that first mission. Maybe what? Over time, 15 people went. If we actually did go. Right. You know, the, you the, didn't the old the old Mark Twain saying, and I'm sure he didn't coin it, is true, which is people would rather um, it's I'm sorry, it's easier to fool people than to tr tell to convince them that they were fooled. And it's yeah, nobody likes to feel like they were tricked because you feel stupid. You yeah. know, it's like, it's like, man, you don't you know, it's like, wait, I fell for that trick for years and years. It's like, you know, somebody telling you like a song lyric that you got wrong, you know, for five years. And, yeah. and you, you feel dumb and I get it. But at the same time, you're absolutely right. When they see it on TV, they believe it. Um, one of my, the favorite things about the moon mission would be the spacesuit, which yeah. is the early versions of the spacesuit. And this is not secret information were plastic and metal. They were these huge yeah. boxy clunky things. And then, and they realize they're going, we can't use this in a production. It's I mean, how you freaking even get this. The spaceship would have to be massive. And so somebody, somebody took the, the chance and they said, wait, we'll just use soft suits. It's like, what do you mean? Soft suits don't work in a vacuum. Yeah, but but the general public doesn't know physics. We can use this. They go, oh, yeah. we'll just put it on TV. And it was a risk. It was like, we'll have them running around with soft suits. And if they see yeah. it on TV, no one's going to question it. And I'll be damned if, they, if that didn't happen. Everyone believed it. It's like, look, a soft suit cannot work in a vacuum. It absolutely uh, cannot work. Well, okay. So what got me was that if, if it was true, yeah. it was all true. Yeah. The, the space station, there would be footage after footage after footage of it being built. Oh, yeah, the like time lapse that's not there. Yeah. I, I went on like a two-week bender of how they put this thing together. Yeah. I couldn't find even one video. I found one of like a warehouse where they were building it, but that was it. Yeah. And they said that three or four people put this thing together, the greatest feat of mankind, and there's no tape. Yeah. So if you have the tape, please leave it in the comments before you criticize any of us. Um, but that's really, you know, or the picture on, you know, the, the iPhone. Look, here's the earth right here. I got it on my iPhone. And you go, 
buddy, that's a drawing. And they go, yeah, well, it has to be a drawing because, you know, the way the satellites work, you know, they take pictures and then the guy draws it. And you go, no, well, we have the guy on video or audio saying, like, I drew the Earth. I've never seen the Earth from space. I just kind of put the stuff together after taking in some of this data here and there. Right. And you're like, oh, wow, you, I didn't realize it. Little little trivia for you, which also wasn't included in the documentary about that shot. You know, the the blue marble shot on your phone. Yeah. You know, the ver which is the first. It was the first background for the first iPhone. Yeah. And they had to create it from scratch. Uh, a guy named Robert Simmons. You know that story. Yeah. And yeah. what was interesting was, and he, of course, built it completely out of Photoshop. There isn't a yeah. single real thing about it. And it still kills me that he was lazy in the Southern Hemisphere. It was like he had to finish it on a Friday. And it's like, oh, I got I got happy hour. Clone, clone, clone. You know, use the cloning tool and made all those clouds. And it's yeah, like, he did. Really? Yeah. It's like, he it didn't, even, didn't even do a great job. And then, so when I was at the Kennedy, or I'm sorry, one of the um, NASA Space Centers in Houston, uh, Houston Space Center with Patricia, we were in um, outside their their space shuttle exhibit, and they uh, you know they hollow out the space shuttle and make all sorts of pictures. And I'll be damned if that Robert Simmons thing wasn't blown up, you know, on poster board on the wall. And I pointed it out to the documentaries guy. I go, look, this shot right here, NASA's because it was a NASA engineer that made it. There, it's like, oh yeah, hey, look, it's Earth. It's like what? Right. I, Grant, and, and I even showed him and the cloning, you know, it's the exact shot. I go, look, see all these, these, these clouds down here. Did they use that in the documentary? No, they did not. No. Nope. So let me ask you that. And well, I want to get the survival guide. I, that's why I named this stream that, but I like this cause it's not fear porn. It's oh, not no, that's fine. You know when It's friendly. That's fine. Um, but you know, how, okay. So I watch it when you have probably a thousand subs yeah. and now it's up to like 80,000 and you used to do the survival guide stuff and things all the time. Then you started getting invited on all these documentaries yeah. I see on the history channel and Netflix and yeah. all this stuff. I know it's a humbling experience. I know, uh, in some circles, all press is good press, sure. no matter if it's hit pieces, but it seems like they always have you on to edit you out of context or just to slam you after the fact of how dumb you are. They'll right. follow you up with the common tactic of the expert that's saying how dumb you are. And they just do this to you repeatedly. Yep. Like, does that get annoying after a while? Um, it does and it doesn't. Uh, any press is good press. I still do believe in that uh, unless you're a politician because, you know, in which case you can get just destroyed. But... Other than that, yeah, any press is good press, and there's only there's only so much you can do. And the bigger the venue, like a major network, the more chance you have. You're you're at the whim of the producers. That's the big yeah. thing. You don't know. It's like, in fact, like National Geographic, the field producer and the people that are shooting it, they have nothing to do with the editing. All they do yeah. is their job is to just get as much footage as possible. And they'll send it back to the main studio, and they will chop it down, and they will decide where it goes. Right. Um, they frame the they frame the argument the way they want it. Yes, framed. absolutely, they absolutely, they will. This. And that's fine. You know, it still generate. What I say is, look, it still generates interest because a lot of people they 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 don't look at the the, the proofs. You know, because there's only so much you can do in in a short segment, and so they'll say, I'm just going to look it up for myself and and kind of start digging through it. And we've still gotten tons and tons of people off those big things. It's like like when Jimmy Kimmel came and crashed us down in at the Dallas conference. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I've had people that have said. I wish we he wouldn't have run the segment. And I go, and you realize that was a 10-minute monologue skit that he did to open the show. I go on national late, you know, national late night television. It's better to have him talking about it than the segment not running at all. In right. fact, he even wasn't going to run the segment. He delayed it for six weeks. And I said, look, it, it's just it's just part of how it goes. I mean, you can't you can't dictate how the media is going to respond to you. Um, the line I've, I've given to so many people is like, look, we've become so media spoiled over the years. Back in 2015, we were just thrilled to death that, that like Forbes magazine even mentioned us in a line. And, yeah. and then last year or into 2018, I remember like Jared complaining. It's like, oh, Newsweek is picking on me. It's like, dude, if, if your biggest problem is that Newsweek is picking on you, you don't have a lot of problems. Yeah, I, it, and and come on, let's face it. Even the the A listers and major celebs have a problem with spin control. You know, yeah. the 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 news organizations they go for the drama, they go for the hype, and like what we're seeing right now. 
and it happens with everybody it's going to happen with us i mean here a perfect example let's let's end this on this then we can do some of the the survival guide which is the mad mike thing perfect yeah. example mad mike uh rolling stone interviewed me for an article just recently about mad mike um do i feel bad about saying that he was the best eight thousand dollars we ever spent no i do not because he was alive when i said that you know, he he came to us for money and said, "Hey, can we can I have money to finish one of my early rockets?" Sure, why not? Here's a big flatter sticker. Put it on the side. You'll be great. You know, uh, a group down in New Mexico set that whole thing up. One of our yeah, yeah, one yeah, of yeah. our guys, and he did that. In fact, the the documentary people, everyone was so worried. He was like, "He's a freaking daredevil." That's what they do. They risk their lives. You know, they jump over things with things. And they were he was supposed to be in the documentary, and he wasn't because the producers were like. What happens if he crashes? Can we use it? You know, it would change the whole tone of the film. So they right, right. so they didn't. And then he got other opportunities. He got his own documentary called Rocket Man. I don't know how well it did. Uh, he got on Daniel Tosh. And then the Science Channel signed him for a TV deal. And during the first episode... The Science Channel did. Yeah, the Science Channel. The, sci the, the footage that they shot, the reason why he got on the news recently is because the Science Channel was out there. They were shooting this whole thing. In fact, they were the ones that called TMZ... To tell them that because someone had to, it's like, oh yeah, he crashed. <laughs> so now will uh, they be able to use the footage and turn it into their own little mini documentary? Probably, probably do yeah. something. But the point was, is that that press, he generated so much media, even though Flat Earth was not his top priority. It was girls, money, fame, maybe his rockets. I don't even know what order, but Flat Earth was barely <laughs> into his top five. Yeah. And so, and so when they say, you know, I still say, you know, was there any regrets? No, he knew what he was getting into. He was a daredevil first. You know, we, we knew full well what he was going to do. And if, if he crashed, he crashed. That's just the way yeah. it goes. That's why yeah. he generated the media in the first place. People, media shouldn't be, and I didn't catch a lot of hell for it. The media shouldn't be hypocrites. The media, right. the only reason you were there is because you thought he might die. <laughs> so, yeah. so then That's he true. did die. It's like, what? You're going to get all sad and indignant? No yeah no I, okay so <laughs> we'll get into this so okay let's get into something i do want to talk about yes. mainly four or five years ago you were doing this this isn't this week you didn't try to catch a wave you weren't no. looking for attention nope. at all this is just something you used to give out out of the kindness of your heart you did it for me when i watched the show a long time ago um survival guy yep, survival and guy. right now Friday the 13th, national emergency, get in your house. Bill Gates quits uh, Microsoft. Yep. All of a sudden, he's now focused fully on eugenics and vaccinations. Yep. The world is damn near crazy at this oh, point. Oh, the queen, the queen left it. London. I mean, yeah. it, it's gotten, no, I mean, yeah. I mean, I, I couldn't even overstate it last night. If there wasn't a, if, if there's not a better time for a survival guide, I, I'd like, if you have a better example, I'd like to see it because right now everything, we are one step away from things getting everything. ugly. You know, yeah, there's, there's the, people, ha no one's been shot at a grocery store trying to get toilet paper, but we're not that far off. And no, it's, we're a week away. If that, it probably will happen tomorrow. And like the timetable just keeps speeding up. But what got you into being a survivalist? Why did you care to get that out when you were getting the flat earth message out? Oh, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was the popular message. But then you had this side thing like, hey, you know, I can also help you with survival. Oh, I yeah, yeah, yeah. Shelves. I got into it way earlier. I got into it with Katrina and I made that the forward of my of my survival guide. I said, look, when Katrina happened, when that big, you know, people aren't old enough to remember yeah. what happened. You know, Katrina rolls into... Um, uh, uh, New Orleans and wipes it out, completely destroys it. Yeah. The whole population is um, put out there. Yeah. Then what happens? Uh, you know, the, the whole population leaves and out of the people that came back and only like half the city even came back. I mean, it's, it's still a, a freaking ghost town down there. Um, most of the people didn't still didn't prep at all. It's like, you look, you're living below sea level. And you yeah. and it's like get some basic supplies. And I was so incensed by this that I decided yeah. to um, write a manual called Empty Shelves. And I so I just assumed that everyone that re read it were just lazy Americans that weren't going to prep at all. And so I assumed yeah. that you weren't. And I said, look, if the the guide was meant for people that still didn't prep, and you could cover everything. So if you prepped a little bit, I got you covered. If you don't prep, I got you covered. 
just follow yeah. the, the basic steps. And what I was basically saying was here, here's what happens during a crisis and here's why. And I went over like the Northridge earthquake uh, in California and yeah. some of the other things that, that, that little disasters have happened around the country. And I go, here's what you should expect. And yeah. the whole thing was centered around the basic premise is that the power goes out and it's, you don't know when it's coming back on and you, and you don't even know why it's out. And yeah. that causes a lot of confusion. And so I put, I put the manual out there and of course, you know, back when Katrina, after Katrina, nothing much happened, but slowly but surely more things happened. And then I, after I started doing my YouTube, I just started giving it to people. Look, it's free. It's a PDF. It's like a couple megs. And, yeah. you know, I didn't publish it as a book. I never sold it. And I said, look, if it, if it helps you, great. It was, it was really cathartic for me to write it. Yeah. And I had, you know, some experience. I was, I loved the whole concept of prepping and right. you know, it's like just, pre and the going against the hypocritical side of people who say, um, look, you know, everyone, you know, a lot of people have home insurance, they have car insurance, medical insurance, you have all sorts of different insurance, which you pay for, but yet you won't spend a hundred bucks and buy some food and water and some batteries and some flashlights and just put them in a corner. Cause yeah. that's all we're talking about here. Cause that's real stuff. Yeah. I mean, I have family members that work on the power grid and what would happen if all the power was taken down. They say like 20% is back up in like eight months. And then we're looking at a three to six year event after that. And it's like, you know, just surviving the first three or four months is crucial. And it's only like 200 bucks worth of stuff. It's very easy things, right. but it was a Katrina. That was it like for you. Like, yeah, that was the big it was one. Like, why were they not prepared? Well, not, not only were they not prepared in the first place. Again, if your city is underneath, you know, under sea level, you're already at risk. But the fact that when they were pushed out, I mean, it was ugly. Katrina was a yeah. nightmare. And yeah. even, even after they left, it was like the most horrible thing ever for them. When they came back, their attitude was like, wow, it'll never happen again. They fell into that denial. It's like, well, it, you know, it lightning will never strike twice. It's like, what? Why? Why would you think this? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. people are funny. They uh, they don't like facing. People don't like the one of the reasons why prepping doesn't appeal to a lot of people is that they have to think about the the bad stuff, you know. Yeah. Uh, and it's like, look, it's don't think about it like that. Think about it like if you got this stuff, it's better. The, the old saying is very very true, which is it's better to have it and not need it than to need it and not have it because Correct. if you need it and not have it, you won't be able to find it. That's the right, difference. Yeah. You can't find it right now. It's gone. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. It, I mean, it, it, think about it right now. The power's on. Everything is relatively normal, normal and you can't find toilet paper yeah. anywhere. And we're talking millions and millions and millions of rolls in the country gone. Yeah. And it's made here. And, it's yeah. not like we outsource it. It's made here. Yeah, yeah. Most of it is made here. And so yeah. what, what, and that's just one item. So don't, don't think for a second. And so uh, my, the manual itself goes through basic steps. It's like, it's not real hard. I'll, I'll give you the four, the four big ones. Ready? Here we go. Yeah. In, in, in order, water, food, light sources, something to protect it with. Yeah. That's it. Water is obvious. And, and, and again, I couldn't overstay it because the average person, you can't go more than three days without water. That's simple. Everybody knows this. I have, yeah. I have actually suffered from dehydration deliberately a few times. It is not fun at all. No. Don't dehydration. You you're terrible. not thinking very clearly at that point. Oh, it's awful. I, um, yeah. Food, a big thing, mostly because food is heat. Um, if the yeah. power goes out, uh, it's cold. You get colder, and food is calories are literally units of heat. And yes, that's that's correct. um yeah. the third thing. Most people will go for like first aid or, or weapons. It's like no, the third thing for me has always been uh, light sources, which is that's the other thing that people forget is like. We, we we bathe ourselves in light all the time right there's the street lights i don't know where where you are but there's always light it's never pitch black um right. places the the world is very very dark without electricity very very dark yeah, yeah. and then number four you know and we can you can go we can go through the other stuff you want but number four is something to protect you with and i don't try i don't even try to push people into guns because there's yeah. some people that are victims of domestic violence. There's some people who just can't stand the sight of guns. And it's like, all right, fine, fine. Yeah. If you, if you like knives, go for a knife. If you like crossbows, go for a crossbow. If you think you can defend yourself with a tire iron, have fun. Except you got a problem. And that is if you live in America, <laughs> there are so many guns.
A lot. There's so yeah. many freaking guns here. I mean, and people people don't get how many people have your neighbors have guns, and they just yeah. don't tell you <laughs> they have guns. Yeah. I know. And so know. You, sooner or later, you're going to have to figure it out and, and decide for yourself what you're going to do. Because if you get supplies, and here's the short version. If you get supplies and somebody comes up to you and robs you, <laughs> give me your supplies. Yeah. If you give away your supplies, well, it's like, then what were you doing? <laughs> what, what, are you, yeah. what are you doing? But it's um, but it goes through also the, the basic psychology of what happens during a crisis, right. which is people panic. And they panic quickly. Right. And um, when the grocery stores, like, for example, I, I went into situations. Where, in fact, it's really interesting because I go into Costco, you know, into the Costco scenario, which is you normally would go to your local grocery store because local law enforcement may post a unit or outside your grocery store. And you're thinking, oh, wow, they're rationing. What we should really do is go to Costco. <laughs> but what you don't know is that right now, yeah, Costco is opening the doors and they sell you stuff, right? If yeah. things get really, really bad, and most people don't know this, is that local government, they all, all, and this happened in New Orleans, and that was like the first indication. Local government yeah. already has agreements with Costco, and that yes, is they, they, have, they send their special weapons team, and they take the local government, the mayor, or whoever it is, and they go into Costco, and they shut the doors, and that's it. No one yeah. gets in. That is the new center of local government, Yeah, and is, which is fine, except that you're going to have that building is going to be surrounded by thousands of people. <laughs> Some of yeah. it are going to be really, really clever. And in fact, I, I kind of joked in the manual and, and I still recommend even now, look, if you're law enforcement, you better bring about 50,000 rounds because you're going to have to use suppressing fire all the time just to keep people from just battering the doors down with stuff. Yeah. It only takes is, you know, Billy Bob to come in with his freaking backhoe <laughs> and he's taking a door out. And it's, but it seems like with like the predictive programming of zombie movies and all this shit. Because I know you like you you put out a theory a long time ago yeah. that we live in like a Truman Show, like a dome type world right. where everything makes sense, like fractals, and there's all this stuff, and it's all orderly and it's all night and neat. Yeah. And then the scientists came out later and said, oh, actually, yeah, that's kind of true. There is a creator. We won't call him God, but. Everything's so orderly, it moves around like this. And yeah, we actually might live in a simulation, you know? Um, which is weird, because they give you no credit at all. They think you're a crazy person, yet, you know, you're saying some of the most sane things. Yeah. But, you know, like right now, like what, what, do you, what do you think is actually happening? We have a national emergency going on. Yeah. I don't know if you believe in God or the Bible with this theory that you have, that we live in a terrarium, basically. Um, for people who don't know, it's like a flat earth with a dome over the top. Sure. The stars are around. If I'm describing that wrong, let me no, know. No, no, you're good. You're good. But people can look that up. I have the links below. But like, what, like, if everything's a stage and there's all these players on it, what better player than a, a New York liberal to come in and say that he's one of the most conservative presidents, call out all these people, but trick you into martial law while something else big is going on at the same time. And it seems to be exponentially increasing. What do you think is going on? I believe, okay, so um, let's, let's break down the virus stuff first. I don't know if I can go much bigger than just the world in general, because I mean, there's some things, there's only so many tiers you can go be before it becomes irrelevant. But the big thing right now is that, again, the virus is being used. Again, do I believe there's a virus? Yep, I do. Do I think it's just a weak form of the flu with a funny name? Yep, that's all it is because it's killing almost nobody. Uh, and they're not even giving out the names, by the way, which I also love. You know, there's 100, we'll just say 110, 120 people. I don't really care. Yeah, say 120 people in the whole country, find me a name of single, a single one of them. Look, a plane crash, a bus crash, a shooting. We get the names of every freaking person and their detailed history and their family history. We get faces all over the place. We get no faces. There should be faces of Corona should have happened months ago and it hasn't happened so it's a smoke screen of something bigger the smoke screen is because um again the fear beat which we talked about is just driving you home yeah what and it's driving you home because there's some something else happening i think there's a physical aspect to it though i don't think it's just a bank collapse i don't think it's a 5g install or people are saying that, that during this they're going to run around all the stadiums and things and install 5g everywhere it's like 
what? They're going to do that anyway. And it's like they have been doing it for the last several years. I worked in that field. In fact, they've yeah, done it it's, secretly for the last two years. It's not a problem. Yeah, I think you're, I think they're, they're thinking too small. Um, yeah, a bank collapse too. A bank collapse is too small. I think there's a physical event involved. And here's the reason I say that. Um, there was, a, there was a, an earthquake that happened back in Washington, D.C. some years ago. I don't know, maybe 10 years ago. And two things happened very quickly during that, which was the earthquake happened, really, you know, pretty big earthquake in Washington, D.C. The first thing that happened was all the mothers called up the schools instantly, but they did it all at the same time. So all the phone lines jammed up. And then once all the phone lines jammed up and they couldn't get a hold of the schools, they all jumped into their cars simultaneously and hit the freeways. And then the freeways jammed up and became this nightmare that happened in about 30 minutes. Well, yeah. If you wanted to, so if something physical happens, if a physical event happens, you don't want that happening. If you want to survive any, re recoup any of the infrastructure, you can't let that happen. Not knocking mothers, there's this huge bond between mothers and their children. Of course. I mean, yeah, mothers will- Logically and spiritually and everything. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's, it's been proven time and time again. Also though, logic goes out the window. They will run you over in a crosswalk to get to their child if, if you're sure in the will. way. So yep. in order to resolve that issue, it's pretty easy. You get the children home. The phone calls aren't made. No one's going to the freeway. The families are at home. So whatever I think is happening is on a physical nature. And if, let's just use an earthquake as an example. If it is, let's say it's a major tectonic quake. Let's say it's the super volcano in Yellowstone. I don't know. But let's say it's a major physical thing. At that point, everybody's home and the family structure is intact. And then whoever makes it, there'll be there's less suffering and you have a greater chance of recouping whatever happens, you know, picking up the pieces yeah. afterwards. Yeah. And that's, but you, in order to do that, you have to create this window of everybody being home and we're close to being in that window right now. Yeah. They're, they're finishing up the, the university uh, closures, you know, I mean, yeah, there's still kids in dorms, different places, but most of the high schools, middle schools, grade schools, those have all been pretty much closed. There's a few holdouts I think here and there, but yeah. what they haven't done is, and you'll know as we get closer, um, the federal government will issue, and it's like, why wouldn't they? Why haven't they done it yet? A, a, a federal, the, the, verb, the verbiage will be different. They'll, they'll say lockdown, but they'll say something else. Like, like a federal like level how they did of, in Boston. Yeah. of um, what's the term, uh, the thing, um, uh, shelter in place. Quarantine. Like, quarantine. There you go. Well, they won't, they won't even like using the word quarantine if they can help it. They'll say like federal quarantine. Um, uh, oh, what is it? Shelter in place. That's that thing okay. that, that San Francisco is yeah. using. Shelter in place. It's like, that's a firefighter's term. I have no idea why they're digging this one up, but it seems to be working. It's a softer, softer thing. And so once they do that, then you've got this window and that's what I would expect. That's what I, that's what I think is happening. There's some sort of physical event that will happen because seriously, you've got everybody in the group. In some cases, the families are together for the first time ever. You know, yeah. it, it, for extended yeah. periods, it's going to be like a little mini pressure cooker because everyone's going to be home. They're going to be getting cabin fever. And then I, I just said that. Yeah, they're going to be watching the television. And and all of a sudden. And so if you want to make it interesting, you follow the, the standard procedures. You kill the power for a few hours. Do it at night if you can. And then when you wake up, everyone's like waiting, waiting, waiting. And then you hit them with it. It's like you turn on the television. And honestly, any, the sky's the limit at that point. You could do anything. Yeah. You could say there was a coup. You could say there was an invasion. You could say that an asteroid hit off the Pacific or Atlantic coast. Any of yeah. these things. You could say there was a nuclear accident. You could say that Yellowstone blew up. But whatever it is would be big. And apparently they're worried enough about it. They're worried about people, obviously, panicking more than they are now. And yeah. so this, and again, this is different from the movies in that, uh, if you remember Deep Impact or Armageddon yeah. or 2012, it, it's different. Whereas in those movies, you told people for dramatic purposes. You told them because the script required it. You don't tell people <laughs> the truth in this case because, because they can't. Yeah. They can't take it. I mean, I've got a thing on my list right now. It's thing I didn't even realize, and that is, while most of the people were out buying, you know, the idiots were out there gutting the toilet paper sections. You know what was being gutted by the other people? Ammunition. Yeah. Ammunition's Tons. gone. <laughs> yeah. The common caliber. Gone. It's all, you know, Cabela's. I was I was watching a thing where Cabela's, she's just walking through and all the common calibers are just cleaned out. Gone. Yeah, gone. they're all gone. So, yeah. with, you know, there's... And why would that happen? Why would that happen for 
you know, a quarantine. Why would be people, you know, clean out the ammo? It's because there's there's an underlying tone here where, you know, other people are going, yeah, this doesn't seem like a yeah, stable situation. Yeah, you can feel it on like a spiritual level that it's an angry, nasty, horrific tone that something horrible is going to happen. They're setting the stage with the media. And I, I mean, I'm glad we had a fun stream, you know, it, it takes people's mind off this, yeah. but it, like it, it, the virus itself, People are like, how dare you not believe in it? It's like, I went to seven places and begged for the test yeah. and no one said they had it. And the most, the biggest healthcare state, I would say in the union, you could say I'm wrong, but I did that myself. You know, just like you say, you guys do your own testing and you do and you bring it and you shoot it and you say when you, you fail, you say when you succeed. That happened to me. I literally did a stream saying it's a bioweapon. Then I did a stream going, oh, wow, I don't even have tests for this thing. But people are so negative and angry. They're buying ammunition. They're ready for something major that's coming. And the drumbeat of the media, even during commercials, Corona kills, Corona kills. Yeah. They don't even take the banner off the TV anymore. We have to turn it off in the house. So you said the four horsemen are coming. I mean, are you, do you even believe in Christianity or the Bible or anything um, more biblical than the flat uh, earth? Or I, do you think that it's, I do, but, but I but I do, but I think there's some things that are open to interpretation. Obviously, yeah. I mean, you know, it, yeah. it's an old it's an old book, a bestseller, but it's still an old book, and uh, there's some things that you know, even though I've got good friends that are Bible literalists, I you know, there's I some things that I don't think we're going to know the true meaning until we see it. And then we'll be like, yeah. oh, that's what it meant. <laughs> yeah. You know, no, you, I, I get I, like the way I explain it to my kid. It's like we use like six, seven, eight percent of our brains. Like me trying to imagine a God or who created this thing is just insane. I could never imagine. It's so beyond me that I, I can't fathom and put it into words. Like I can only use human objects to explain what I think it's like. And even that's not going to suffice. So I can't really explain this to you, you know? Yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. there are some things that don't have an explanation and don't need one and can't be put into human words. Um, I appreciate it. The last question I want to ask, sure. it's very important. I've asked people this, I guess two, one quick one and one hard one. The quick one is at this point, being a celebrity, being on TV and all this stuff, is there anything you could see that would change your mind that we don't live in a terrarium, we don't live on a flat earth, like if we could launch out and we had tons of proof and it was released, would you believe it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's uh, there's two things I could do. Um, first one is, uh, one, one is more expensive than the other. The first one would be uh, the 4K camera test, which is you yeah. take a 4K camera, you put it on any rocket, the capsule, you point it at the ground, and you, you turn it on, you do not move it, you do not edit, you do not pause, you just let that sucker run, and it should go from the, the launch pad all the way up to freaking orbit, what, what Tesla should have done, sorry, Tesla, um, uh, SpaceX should have done with that whole Tesla yeah. in space, which they didn't do, and what nope. everybody else should have done, Apollo and Mercury and Gemini and all those guys, they didn't do, and that's the more expensive one. But the one that, again, part of my spacesuit challenge, which I've been put out there for two years, which was give me a freaking spacesuit, you know, to, to use, loan me a spacesuit, because apparently every spacesuit that was made from the 60s to now is absolutely bulletproof and has never had a flaw ever. No, no astronauts ever died in a spacesuit because of the spacesuit problem. Um, give me a, put me in a vacuum chamber, turn it on and tell me how everything works. Tell me yeah. how I survive. And 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 they're saying, well, that doesn't prove it's a flat Earth. I go, no, but it goes a long, long way into proving that NASA is somewhat legit, because what I'm yeah. saying is there's no technology out there that stops a spacesuit from uh, being subject to the extreme pressures of a vacuum. And if the spacesuit is a lie, then everything that's ever shown a spacesuit is a lie, and yeah. that's it. That which means every the entire space program is fake. And every space program is fake. And if and people say, well, that still doesn't prove a flat Earth. I go, no, but it leads into a, a whole other series of questions, which is why did everybody have to fake it if you have the tech now? Did you have uh, the, yeah, that's where I'm at. Yeah, it's, did you? Have, why did you have to put out the lies if you were telling the truth the entire yeah, time? Yeah, if you, I mean, if you had the tech, obviously they didn't have the tech in 1969. No, I mean, no. The tech 69 was terrible. No, no. But in 2020, yeah, sure. Sure, we got some good stuff. I mean, you know, I, the the planes are much better, and and our our computer technology is much better. Could we have done it? Yeah, but why do you have to lie? You know, why the lie? So yeah, and why can't you admit it? Now the harder question is this: 
you obviously know a lot about a lot of other things like, you know, banking, the Federal Reserve, the stock market, sure. uh, the phony bubbles that we're in. Yeah. You know a lot about actual things that are tangible. You can put your hands on. You can prove them. You can know about secret societies. You know about all types of different stuff. Yeah. Who controls this or that? Why go after flat Earth? Why is it so crucial? Is it because that it's a very simple exercise and people not knowing why they believe in just the most fundamental thing of where you live? Yeah. Is that what yeah, it leads into the, the reason why I go after flat earth instead of anything else is because flat earth seems to tie into it dovetails into so many different things that uh, but what you said, it's a perfect example of why people believe what they believe flat. You, you yeah. believe the globe because you're told it's a globe and it's re, it's it's the old, one of the oldest tricks ever, which is if you repeat something over and over and over and over again. It will sink in. Uh, it's the Orwellian four lights versus five lights. You don't. Yeah. You you believe in the globe because you saw the toy, and yeah. you know a, a perfect example. Um, sorry, l last thing for this would be the the physics that are told to us in movies that we believe because we've seen them in the movies. Um, yeah. The vacuum, for example, the vacuum chamber is instant. Um, everyone remembers the end of Aliens where Ripley shoots the alien out of the airlock, right? And she, she claws her way out. You know, she's yeah. she, bare empty space is behind her. She's actually venting into space and she's pulling herself out of the airlock. And yeah. people don't understand. It's like, that's not how it works. It's, she's dead in a tenth of a second in, in, that, yeah. in that scenario. And we all see the movies. It's like, there's a hole in the side of the ship. We only have two minutes of air left. Better get something. It's like, no, you're dead. You're dead yeah. instantly. So, yeah. um, you know, that there's so many little movie tricks. But, yeah, we believe things that that's why I go after Flat Earth, because it's it's an honest look. It's, it's a very, very basic, brutal look at you believe things because you're told this or you sh or you're shown this. Even if it's fiction, right. you you buy it. We do it. I mean, um, let me end with this. Which is again, you know, people don't don't take my word for it. Do your own research and ask questions. But you have to ask yourself why younger people to give as much credit to a YouTube person that has two million subs as they do a CNN journalist that's been on the job twenty years. Why? Yeah. Why? Because it's on the same screen. That's why. It's, yeah. it's you're, you're like, look, it's oh, PewDiePie. I, I've literally talked to kids. PewDiePie, totally legit. Right. It's like you realize he buys his subs. Right. It's like, nah, nah, he's totally legit. It's like, really? Because <laughs> I, I didn't like, even know that. That's that's news to me. I follow him from time to time and I had no idea he buys his oh, subs. Oh, God, yes. But he, I, he, I'll take your word. I mean, it. do you realize do you really think this Swedish hack, this Swedish um, uh, troll has three times more subs than Taylor Swift and Katy Perry know. and Justin know. Bieber? I don't know how this stuff works. You know, I, I got into this to try to get banned and, and warn people like, hey, they're saying they want to kill off half of humanity. And they've been saying it for a year, these eugenicists. Hey, they've done experiments in New York City where they used to release poisonous gas to see what the ambulance response time was. And they wouldn't tell anybody no. about it. They used to put lithium in the drinking water in Texas and say, hey, let's see if these people become nicer by putting lithium in the drinking water. So I wanted to do a stream and just let people know this stuff has happened. Hey, the, the CIA used to just drop LSD in people's drinks and then they used to follow them around, you know, yeah. like it's just you're, the reality of the world that we live in. It's brutal. And it's I like talks like this because they're fun and yeah. I don't have to talk about those horrific things. Yeah. But, uh, you know, is there anything else that that was always my question? It's like, I know so many smart people like, you know, David Weiss lives very close to me. He's a very smart guy. Yeah. He knows so many things. And it's like, why flat earth all the time? You know, you know, a lot of other things. Why is it this? Why is it this issue? And I guess your your response and my response, I guess, would be because it's the most basic. Why do you believe this? Yeah. Give me your best shot and your best answer. Are you a physicist? Do you know anything about physics? Yeah. Do you know anything about vacuums, mechanics, how things work? And I think that inspires people to try to disprove you or to prove that you're right. And I think it's actually creating more scientists, not hurting them, unless you disagree with me. I, no, I absolutely agree. I absolutely agree. We are the new scientists. And l let me end with, with something because I've been trying to plug this more and more, which is, you know, if you don't like watching videos, but if you're a big app fan, 
Dave, yeah. David Weiss and the DITRH group, they created the most wonderful app, and I was so sad that I didn't get it until 2019, uh, the Flat Earth Sun, Moon, and Zodiac Clock app. It's gorgeous. I promote it um, in, in every slideshow that I do, and it's, it's wonderful. It gives you a, a perfect example because a lot of people can't visualize the Flat Earth, and you, you no. pull it up on your phone. It's like, here it is. I'm trying to right now, and now he's making me update the damn app. But <laughs> he came on, and he gave me the app. He was like, oh, I'll give it to you. You know, I just want you to – I'm like, Dave, I already know all this stuff. You know, I, I've been following you guys for, like, you know, since Jaron had a, a phone where he's making videos doing absolutely nothing. It's just an interesting mental yeah, exercise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, it's not hurting anyone, and there's so many people that are hurting people, and no one calls them out. No one says anything. Yeah. But you guys, like, I'll have a million trolls later on this video. It will get out. It'll be one of the few that goes out. And people will be like, you're insane for having that person on. You've lost all respect with me. And I go, you follow a pedophile. Like, what, you know what I mean? Like, it, it makes no sense to me that you guys get so attacked in the comments and things oh, like that. Oh, no, no, no. It's, 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 that's par for the course. Again, people, what I try to tell people is like, look, if you don't get mad at Flat Earth in the first 20 minutes, there's probably something wrong with you. Because it's it's a tough subject. Again, it's like telling somebody when they're thirty that they're adopted. That's about yeah. that's about the only equivalent I can give you. And and I mean seriously telling them, not saying, "Oh, you're fr you're freaking adopted." It's like, man, I'm pretty sure you're adopted. And no offense to the adopted people out there, but if, if all of a sudden you hit that, you know, it's like, "Oh, you're full of it. You're full of it." And then all of a sudden, one day, the second you start to believe it, you just have these weird flashbacks and you revisit everything from your childhood. Yeah. Going. So. Anyway. Yeah. No, oh, I appreciate what you do. And thank you for coming on. You're welcome every time. Oh, yeah, and thank I, you. I, I'm very happy to have your time. I mean, five years ago, I was watching you with 500 subs. Now it's like 90,000. And, um, you know, whether people agree or disagree with you, I hope they either try to disprove you or prove you. But either way, I hope they become interested in what you do. They don't become eugenicists. Yeah. They don't try to be social controllers and dominate other people. And I hope they're prepared. And I do think something a lot bigger than a, a simple virus is coming. And so do you. And I'm very glad we had this chat tonight. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me. And uh, best to you and yours. And let's see how next week goes. Yeah, I same to you, brother. And I appreciate it. You, you ever want to come back or anything, let me know. Okay. Have a good one. You too, Mark. Thank you, buddy. See ya. Bye-bye. Bye now. All right.